handed to him. If not, he would live as if he has nothing. That's what the children of God are facing now. Amen. So I just want to enlighten on something that is very important to you as a child of God. So that this word increase grace will become your daily bread. Amen. You see, this year you are programmed to score any test that will be brought to you. That's why that's why this two, uh, twenty means twenty is the number of scores. Twenty is score. You are going to score. Amen. You score it means you win. It means you will finish in a grand style. You you cross the finish line in a grand style. The only thing that will move you and tame you down is what I'm going to share with you. It's very important that you open your heart and your spirit to receive. Amen. That's the only way we win. Amen. You see, as a child of God, you should not, once again, you shouldn't accept the thoughts from Satan. Satan is always coming at us with thoughts. Thoughts of doubt. He always comes at you. Even though you've been given this grace, increased grace, this, the devil will bring thoughts just to control your feelings. Just to control your emotions so that you depend on your feelings and your emotions. Your emotions and your feelings will always fail you. That's the only way he can get you. Amen. Amen. We've been born as children of God to win and to succeed in life. Mm. Not to fail. That's why we've been given grace. The grace is to prove to you that you'll be redeemed and you'll be You've been set apart. <coughs> Your life has been transformed to a different level. Amen. Amen. But it comes when you allow the word of God to always be ahead of you. Always be the light to guide you. Amen. Amen. I want you to open your scripture to Ecclesiastes. 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 It's not this. Amen. It's this. Chapter 10, verse 8. Today we're going to, um, we're going to have communion. Just to sparkle you. And just to empower you to experience that supernatural ability of God. Amen. Amen. It was just this. Chapter 10, verse 8. Oh, you are welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are welcome. Amen. That's the words I just received now. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your voice and your words. Thank you. Uh, what did I say? Ecclesiastes 10.8. 10.8. Okay, so let's see what is there. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. It said, He that digged a pit shall fall into it. And who so but who so who so broken a head a serpent shall bite him? I want you to listen again. He that digged a pit shall fall into it. And who so bringeth a head a serpent shall bite him? Why is this scripture so important as a child of God? Amen. Most of the time we say, oh. Uh, God, is, God has spoken this, but I'm not experienced in it. I've been faithful to this. I've been faithful to that. I've been doing this. I've been doing that, but I'm, yet I'm not seeing the result of what God has given to me. I want to understand there's a difference between faithfulness and faith. You cannot substitute faith to faithfulness. There's a way big difference between faithfulness and faith. God said in his word, he said, without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot move mountains. It didn't say, without faithfulness, you can move God. Please, I want to understand this. There's a big difference between faithfulness and faith. 
You could be doing so many things and you think you are faithful. But yet, you will be experiencing failure and disappointment. You are faithful because of something. But when you move from faithfulness to faith, there's a different atmosphere. Amen. So, let's find something very quick from Job. Job chapter. Job chapter 1. Job. They will be Job. Job in chapter 1. He said, there was a man in the land of Ruth, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God, and is still evil. And they were born unto him, seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand deep. So I don't just skip all this that he had, and just go straight to the point. I'm going to read from verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said, verse 7, the Lord said unto Satan, Where is thou? Where is comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going forth, going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There was none like him in the earth. A perfect man and upright man, and that fear God, and is too evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do Job fear God for naught? And not all for nothing? Has thou not? He said, Has has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house, about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and, and his substance is increased in the land. Eleven, put, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had. Or he hath, and he will cast thee to thy face. Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath, all that he hath, is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went from thence, from, from, sorry, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Oh. Many people study the theologians and the, and the church answers and solutions always say, Wow. So, actually, God gave Job into the hands of the devil. Because that's what the Bible is saying. Amen. And that's why we have to study for us to explain things to you. Because the Bible says, God said, everything, he said, everything he had is in your hands now. See, Jesus, or God, was telling Satan now, everything that this man had now is in your hands. So does it mean that God actually <laughs> said, I'm giving, I'm delivering everything that Job, now everything about him, now you deal with him now. No, what... God was trying to tell us this what I asked you to read earlier. Ecclesiastes 10 8. Shall we go there again? We have to give you a question, we have to give you an answer. Amen. We're trying to tell you what happens to a believer, a child of God. Even though God has spoken 
gloriously into his life or her life. Can we read again? The reason why I want you to read because God said, <laughs> He said, He said, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in that power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. So actually, God, God handed Job to the devil. No. No. But let's go to let's go to Saint Job and, and we'll go back to what I asked you to. Let's go Saint Job. The Saint Job. Chapter three. And this 25 and 26. Job 3. See, the reason why I have to pick this scripture, Job means like, if you're going to look for something to work, it's like I'm going to, I'm going to look for a job. So, I mean, it's our duty to make changes. So, we have to use Job to get a job done. Amen. Amen. Are you getting it? <laughs> Amen. So, let me just read it quickly. He said, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest. Neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Did you get it? Your mind is going through certain things. I'm just, I'm pointing out the things you call it problems as a child of God, as a Christian. God has spoken. God said you are this. God said you are blessed. Yet, those things are not working. In other words, why is it that bad things happen to good people, especially the children of God? Let me, let me put it in a way. Why is that bad things happen to good people, especially children, especially Christians? See, this is question and answer. When we went to chapter 1, verse 9, did you hear it? Satan was telling God that you have put a hedge, you have protected this man, not him only, but everything that he had. In other words, Satan happens to be visiting Job 24 hours a day and he didn't get any entrance. Please, are you getting this message? The reason why Satan has to explain to God that this man is not saying, trusting you because of what you have done for him. Because you have put protection around him, his house, his substances, his possessions. That's why this man is still remaining faithful to you. But you take this protection out of him and you see him all speaking bad words to you that God, if you are really there, save me. But here God is trying to tell you, he's telling us that your problem was not the word. He had faith in God. His problem was he was an accommodating fear. Job had everything but his mind. His mind was on the things of the worldly. He was thinking, how can God bless you? Please, I want to listen. How can God bless you? And God does not release protection around you. But my Bible tells me that God is good. God is kind. God is merciful. God would need, he wouldn't 
allow a woman to conceive eight months, nine months, and give birth to the child. And when the child is three years old, God will say, it's enough, I'm coming to take this child away. What kind of God he is? Please, I want, you to, I want you to understand the kind of God we are worshiping, we have. How can God bless you so much? And God said, I don't need you as a child anymore. So I'm taking everything. And sometimes we allow this uh, because even Job said it. It's the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Ha! So the Lord gives. Allow this one to go to. You, women, you, you get it. If you are pregnant, you see that sometimes you get, you get irritated on certain things. That's what pregnancy is uh, a sentence. You don't want to look at anybody. You don't want to, you want to change your diet. Sometimes you'll be spitting. It's not like it's something like you, you, sometimes you have to take a cup, even in the public, because you don't want to humiliate yourself. It's part of the things that women go through when they're pregnant. You go, you go through all this and God, after a certain time, the back the child is 70 years, and God says, I'm going to take the child from you. Is God that wicked? No. I serve a God who wept when Martha and Mary were crying. When they lost their mother, Lazarus. I serve a God who located that woman from name. The devil was taking her only son to the cemetery because the devil killed her husband. And the devil said, I'm coming again to mess your life up. I'm coming again to take your last door from you. I'm taking you to the cemetery for the second time. Jesus said, no. You're not going to the cemetery the second time. You went there the first time that I'm not going to watch you to go to the cemetery the second time. The Bible said Jesus came and touched the bed, the coffin. He said you're not going to the cemetery the second time. Yeah. This is the kind of God that I serve. Yeah. I serve a God who preached to the congregation and they were hungry. The disciples were telling them to leave them and go so that they will go. Sometimes if they die, they don't care. But Jesus said, we can't let these people to go. If you let them go, they will die on the way. We have to feed them. We have given them spiritual food. We have to feed them physical as, as well. He fed them. And the Bible said there was 12 bastards left over. He gave them so much for them to know that God is a God of abundance. This is the kind of God that I say. Amen. I said the God who said, I'm spoken to my children verbally. I'm making my word become reality. I'm making the words I've spoken to them become a thing or a substance. I'm making myself a substance to visit them here on the earth in Jerusalem in Israel. I'll come and show myself and prove to them that I love them. Yes. I'm giving myself as a ransom so that they shouldn't be punished because of their sins. I've come to take their punishment. So if they support to make mistakes and acknowledge that I came to redeem them, their punishment can never be activated. Every punishment that the children of God should go to Jesus Christ, he came to take every punishment. So when you sin and you acknowledge Jesus, you came, you came for this reason. The Bible says, the word, the word, the word buyback, which is ransom, is activated. This is the God of, is the kind of God that I save. God is not wicked. God will not bless you something and God will come and take it. He does not, let me tell you, God does not bless you. He doesn't take, he doesn't give you and take it. No. He bless you permanently. He doesn't take the blessing from you. The boy messed up. He took everything. He even shot at his father. Even though you are not dead, but I'm taking the way. I know you're going to die. Giving the father false message. 
He took so many things from the father. He came back. The father, the father did not remind him of his mistakes. He accepted him. This is the kind of 